On to the mess that is Stone Master Corp, the loss-making marble and granite manufacturer that's set to be facing corporate governance issues, says an EGM scheduled for tomorrow is invalid. It has filed an injunction to stop the meeting. To recap, tomorrow's EGM is being called by its single largest shareholder, Li Fong Yin. It is seeking to oust the company's MD, Kuo Mui Ti, Executive Director Li Hua Cheng and eight other directors. Kuo had previously revealed that Stonemaster had received letters from minority shareholders claiming they were told by anonymous sources about unlawful activities and wrongdoings in the company and that investigations were underway. He told the press today that the company will not recognise the validity of tomorrow's EGM because it has not been substantially and procedurally called for and seriously affects the fundamental right of shareholders. He also claims that Fong Yin may have tampered with the EGM's proxy forms. Hong Leong Financial Group saw a 33% jump in third quarter net profit due to higher net interest, non-interest and Islamic banking income. Net profit came in at 418.7 million compared with 315.1 million the year before, while revenue was 19.5% higher at 1.2 billion compared with about 1 billion last year. The group also declared a dividend of 25 cent per share for the quarter. On the results, President and Chief Tan Kong Kun says business growth remains intact and more importantly, its core businesses continue to show strong credit and liquidity risk metrics which are important in these times. HLFG's units similarly reported good numbers today. Hong Leong Bank saw its third quarter net profit increase by 14.4% from 497.8 million to 569.5 million. Hong Leong Capital's third quarter net profit rose by 52% from 17.1 million to 26 million. Apparel firm Voya Holdings is looking at venturing into construction and logistics. Its chairman Zaro Ahmad says this would be possible via a tie up with his private businesses in the two segments. Zaro controls consortium Zenith BUCG, the contractor involved in infrastructure projects in Penang. Voyer is currently working on its rationalisation plan, which it hopes to complete this year. Aside from diversifying its income base, it's also looking at the possibility of scaling down its apparel business. It doesn't mean there aren't any bright spots. Zaro says there are still areas in the apparel business that are making money, so those viable businesses will be maintained. Boyer closed down seven shops in 2016 and opened three new ones this year. Fausted Holdings turned profitable in its first quarter of FY17, recovering from a net loss a year ago. This as its plantation, finance and investment, and trading and industrial divisions did better in the three months to March. Earnings improved to 4.2 million ringgit year on year from a net loss of 21.5 million. Revenue rose about 28% to 2.4 billion ringgit from about 1.9 billion previously. It announced a first interim single tier dividend of 2.5 cent per share. Going forward, Bowsted is expecting 2017 to be a challenging year in both domestic and international fronts. Still, it says prospects will continue to be positive as the domestic economy is well supported by strong economic fundamentals, sound financial system, accommodative monetary policy as well as the implementation of various government initiatives. Petronas has given the go-ahead for a 25 million US dollar deal that will see Hibiscus Petroleum's indirect unit C Hibiscus buying Shell's 50% stake in the 2011 North Sabah Enhanced Oil Recovery Production Sharing Contract or PSC. The deal comprises four producing oil fields, pipeline infrastructure and the Sabah crude oil terminal. According to an independent technical valuer, the fields are producing over 16,000 barrels of oil per day with estimated remaining developed reserves of 62 million barrels as of April 2016. Currently, Sabah Shell Petroleum is the operator of the contract with partners Shell Sabah Selatan and Petronas Charigali. The PSC has production rights until 2040. The proposed acquisition is expected to be completed by the second half of 2017.